Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. First and foremost, I would like to apologize, firstly, for the state of my hands. Um, I am in the middle of doing a complete renovation of my daughter's bedroom for her birthday next week. But also, for the quality of my voice, I am still fighting a cold at the moment. But... Since Christmas, I have been producing videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I haven't missed any slots as of yet, and I didn't want today to be the first day that I, I failed to put out some content. So um, I am squeezing in a quick bit of videoing between drinking Lemsip and painting walls. And, as you may have guessed, I'm talking about Labyrinth. Labyrinth, this is actually... Uh, my wife's game. I bought it for her a while back. And if you have read my review on alwaysboardneverboring.com or watched my previous video on the Labyrinth board game, you will know that I'm not a big fan of the game itself. It's not a very good game. However, it does have very beautiful artwork and very beautiful miniatures. And each time that River Horse releases an expansion for the game, I have purchased it because... Um, you get more of those lovely miniatures based on one of the greatest films ever made um, by one of the greatest humans ever made, Jim Henson. So um, I have been acquiring the expansions for my wife. Uh, there was a goblin expansion, which didn't really add any new rules or anything. It just added new goblin miniatures, which are really cool. And for her birthday recently, I acquired the Fireys expansion. Here's the box for the Fireys expansion. You will notice there are no miniatures in the box. That's because I have painted them. The Fireys expansion actually includes four Fireys. Uh, why there is only four, I do not know. Um, in the movie, there are five Fireys. Um, and for some reason, in this particular expansion, they didn't include the older Fiery who has the big bushy moustache. Which is a shame. I would have liked to have had him as well but instead you get four fireys and then you also get a new jareth the base game comes with jareth in his um magic dance outfit and then this expansion has jareth wearing his end game outfit um the you have no power over me final confrontation which is very cool so i'll pick these up for my wife for her birthday and as a surprise I painted them for her um, unfortunately I wasn't able to get any footage of me painting them because I had to do it secretively when she was doing night shifts I had to quickly set up and paint and then hide everything away again so I couldn't have all my cameras set up and and, and get proper footage of me painting them but I thought I would very quickly show you what I've done talk through how I achieved the look, and then also, very briefly, just talk about the expansion itself, because unlike the Goblins expansion, the Fireys expansion actually does include some new gameplay elements, and it's actually quite interesting and quite nicely integrated into the theme of the Labyrinth. So let's have a look at these Fireys first. So as anybody who watches my channel knows, I am a lazy painter. I go for quick um, tabletop quality um, but I'm very happy with with how these turned out I think I managed to achieve quite a good likeness it's very difficult to get good uh, reference material to paint from for the uh, the fireys because the lighting in the scene changes their appearance from shot to shot and sometimes they look more purple sometimes they look more red sometimes they look more white so it's very difficult to kind of get a clear bead on exactly what colors they should be so i did the best i could and i am happy with what i achieved so i'm going to show you all four and then i will very quickly I explain how i did it so that's number one one of my favorite he's taking his head off Remember, it's against the rules to take off somebody else's head. Here's number two. This was actually the first one I painted, and I was still um, figuring out exactly how to do it. So this is probably my least favorite of the four. He's not quite as bright as the others. Uh, but also, he's got a, a slightly different face to the others. Um, it's a very different shape, and he has smaller eyes, which were more difficult to paint. So he doesn't have quite as much expression. Here's number three. I quite like this one. He's uh, creating fire. I painted the fire using a technique 
which I recently showed in a video where I was painting Dungeons and Dragons Blazing Skeletons. Um, the third skeleton in that video I painted using a traditional fire appearance for the flames and I used that same technique on his little fiery finger here. And this one's my favourite. Um, I, I think it's, it's a toss up really between uh, the one taking his head off and this one but I think I really nailed the face on this one. So, in terms of painting them, they were given a spray undercoat of Chaos Black, just a, as a base to work from. I then painted over the whole miniature with Evil Sun Scarlet, and I did two coats of that to get a nice, smooth base colour to work from. I then used Army Painter Red Tone to put a wash over the whole miniature, um, just to define the detail. And then I switched to Wild Rider Red um, and I overbrushed the fur. So overbrushing, um, what I sometimes call wet brushing, it's like dry brushing but with a little bit more paint on there. Um, and just going across the, uh, these miniatures are really, really quite nice. They've got quite clearly defined fur um, and I was able just to whip the brush over the, over the fur moving against against the grain to bring out those details. So first, like I say, it was Wild Rider Red, and then I switched to Lava Orange, which is an army painter paint, but um, any Games Workshop orange, bright orange color will work. And I did the same thing again. I overbrushed again, but obviously trying to keep more to the, the most raised areas. And then, um, still using Lava Orange, I added Flash Gits Yellow. So I had a 50-50 mix of Lava Orange with Flash Gits Yellow. And again, I overbrushed. And again, focusing more on the most raised areas. And then, I added more yellow again. So I had, it was about 90% yellow to 10% uh, orange. And just did a very light overbrush right on the extremities. And on some of them, I then did a very small amount of white scar overbrushing. You can see that on this guy, just on his tummy there and on the tips of his hair. Sorry, we're going out of focus a little bit there. But I didn't do that on all of them. That completed the fur. And really, the... The most time taken was waiting for each coat to dry. For the skin, um, I used Army Painter Tanned Flesh. And uh, I painted all of the skin, just um, a single coat. I then used Reichland Flesh Shade and just very carefully washed over all of the skin. Being careful not to go over the fur elements. And then I layered tanned flesh back over the top again to, to bring the colour back out. And that was it. That was the skin finished. Finally, I used Pallid Witch Skin to uh, pick out the eyes and then Chaos Black to dot the pupils. I use Pallid Witch Flesh um, quite often for eyes because it's not quite as stark and bright white as using White Scar or something like that. It's just a little bit more toned down, a little bit more muted. I mean, you can get away with a really bright eyes on something like this because it's a Muppet, basically. Um, you don't have to worry about it looking uber realistic. But that is how I painted the Fireys. And then we have Jareth in his beautiful white outfit. Um, this one was a little bit more difficult to paint than the Fireys um, required a few more different techniques and things to get to get done. I basically started by doing Rakarth flesh over the boots, the legs and the shirt. And I actually left the legs as just Rakarth flesh. There's nothing else on those at all. Um, the boots were then simply give it a very light wash of Agrax Earthshade and that finished those as well because um, obviously it's all different sort of scales of pale. For the shirt, it was Rakarth Flesh followed by Agrax Earthshade, um, then 
picked out with skeleton bone, which is an army painter paint. Um, you can use your shabti bone instead from Games Workshop. And then a final tip highlight of pallid witch flesh just on the most raised exposed edges. And that gives a nice sort of pale bone colored shirt. For the cloak, we have Celestra Grey. And then I got some Army Painter Blue Tone, but any blue wash will do. Um, and I thinned it a lot. It was watered down to almost nothing. And then I painted that blue tone over the whole cloak. Then it was dry brushed with Ulthuan Grey, and then dry brushed with White Scar. Very simple. For the hair, to try and get blonde for the hair, which isn't easy. Blonde hair isn't isn't as easy as, as you think it might be. Um, I used Zandri Dust, and then I gave it a Reichland Flesh Shade wash, and then I dry brushed it with Skeleton Bone. Again, you can use your Shabti Bone instead. And then finally, uh, there's the skin element. So the skin element is just Cadian Flesh Tone, then a Reichland Flesh Shade Wash, and then Cadian Flesh Tone again, um, back on the raised details. And that's it. The base on all of these is just Zandri Dust. I kept them plain and solid because I really like the bases. They kind of make them look like they're statues on plinths. So besides the miniatures, you don't actually get a lot in this expansion. You get one rule sheet, double-sided. You get four new adventure cards. And you get this cool new location card, which actually shows all five of the fireies, including... Here's the one you don't get with the, uh, with the moustache. And this goes on the board. So this actually takes up a spot on the board. And it's a spot where you can where you never draw adventure cards when you land on it. Because it is the Fireys camp. And the way that the Fireys are introduced into the game. It's quite cool. It's quite thematic. Like I say, you have these new adventure cards. And these are shuffled into your deck of adventure cards. They go, you split the deck and you shuffle these into the top section. Because you don't want these turning up during the end game because they're they're annoying um, and there's four they're all different they each show one of the miniatures and basically you get ambushed they turn up there's actually um an ambushed by fireys card in the base set and you actually remove that card and replace it with these four cards so adding this expansion actually adds a little bit um to the number of adventure cards that are actually in the deck um, but you take one out. And when you draw one of these, a fiery turns up and he steals one of your dice. This one will steal the purple dice. This one will steal the purple dice. This one will steal the green dice. That's, that's the dude with the moustache. But that's not, that's not who the miniature is. They've used... They've used the picture of the of the fiery with the moustache, but the the miniature isn't the fiery with the moustache. That's annoying. Um, and then this one will steal the green die. Stealing a die is exactly what it sounds like. When you draw one of these cards, the fiery in question will turn up on your space, and the dice matching the colour is placed on that fiery's base. And then he moves. You roll the red dice and you move that many spaces towards the camp. Until you catch that fiery, you no longer have access to the dice that the fiery is holding. If you have to roll that dice for any reason, you have to roll the weaker dice. So if you would need to roll the green dice, you would need to roll the, the weaker dice for you. However, if, you're, if the enemy need to roll the green dice, they actually get to roll the stronger dice so it's something that hampers you and helps the enemies so if a fiery has one of your dice you need to go and catch that fiery 
To catch fireys, you have to land on their space and then you attack them. The fireys, and they, they fight in a group if there's more of them, more than one on the space, they will use the dice that they have uh, that they've stolen. So if there's a green and a purple one on the same space, they will roll the green and purple dice. And you get to pick um, as the player whether you're going to challenge them in cunning or strength. If you win the challenge, then the fireys are removed from the board. However, if there is another fiery on the board that doesn't have a dice, the dice actually gets thrown to that fiery. Um, kind of like when they throw their heads to each other in the film. They throw the dice instead. So just defeating a fiery may not actually help you retrieve that dice. It will just move the dice to another fiery. But if you land on a fiery who doesn't have a dice for any reason, uh, then they are immediately removed from the board. So you kind of need to remove the ones that don't have dice and then hunt down the ones that do have dice so that they've got nowhere to throw their, to throw their head. And that's it really. Um, each time Jareth takes a go, he will also move the fireys. The fireys each roll the red dice and move that many spaces towards the camp. Once they get to the camp, they stay there. So eventually you don't have to constantly chase the fireys around the board. They eventually reach a location and they will stop there and wait. So eventually, if you can get to the camp, you can take them all on. But obviously, once they get to the camp together, they're stronger because they can fight together. Although there's only ever a maximum of two because um, if a fiery appears on the board and they would steal a dice that another fiery has already taken, they just take the dice off of that fiery. They pass it between them. At most, you're going to be facing... Um, a fiery with a purple dice and a fiery with a green dice. And that's how the fireys work, basically. They turn up, they steal your dice, which makes it more difficult for you to win challenges, makes it easier for the enemies to win challenges. And they're annoying and they run around and they do exactly what they do in the movie. They wind you up, steal your stuff, um, and then throw, throw their heads around. If you defeat them, you retrieve your dice and you can continue the game. There's no reward for defeating them other than you get your dice back. So it's an expansion which only adds extra challenge. So if you're finding the base game very easy, this is an expansion that's worth looking at because it adds to the challenge. But of course, for me uh, personally, the main reason to have this expansion is because of those beautiful miniatures. I should also mention, of course, uh, the Jareth miniature does not have any new rules. It's basically an alternative miniature that you can use rather than using the one from the base game. What I would like to do with it is use the Jareth from the base game during the main part of the game and then when you get to the finale and you have to fight Jareth in the final stage of the game, switch to this expansion form because that mirrors what happens in the movie. But that is it. That's everything I have to say about it. I hope um, you have found this quick look at the Fireys expansion for Jim Henson's Labyrinth interesting. I uh, hope that my slightly off voice um, hasn't been too off-putting. If you have liked the video, please consider pressing the like button. And if you have really liked the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully I'll see you all again very soon when my throat won't be about to give out on me. Bye-bye everyone, bye-bye.